All right, so today we're gonna to talk about the joiner. We're gonna talk about what it's used for, how to set it up, what are the parts, and most importantly, how are we gonna use this safely? So the main job of our joiner is to get one edge straight, one face flat, and then one edge 90 degrees, typically, to our face. So let's talk about the parts of the joiner and what you're gonna to need to know. Uh, we have the infeed table where we'll bring the stock through. We have this guard that is covering our set of blades here that are on a spindle. And this is turning in a clockwise rotation towards the material. And then we have our outfeed table. Now we can adjust our infeed table with a lever down here. And typically I leave this at about 1 64th. The maximum I would probably ever take off at a time is at about 1 32nd of an inch. Although maybe the maximum would be 1 8th, but that's in very rare occasions. Uh, on the outfeed table, it is also adjustable, but we leave that dial alone. We don't mess with that because if we change that or if it's off, that will give us a weird cut and will not mill our wood properly. If you find that if you're using this and you're not getting a good edge or you're not getting a good face or something's wrong, uh, I can check this, make sure it's in alignment, but um, that's gonna be a different video for a different time, but we're just making sure we don't touch the outfeed handle. We're only touching the infeed. The fence here, this is also adjustable. We can push this out for milling a wider face or bring it in for milling a narrower face. Uh, typically this lives at 90 degrees to the, to the out feed table and in feed table, but we can change this and put a different degree on this if we want to do that. Now in this particular model, we have our power buttons here, green for on, red for off. And we also have the safety stop here. And just in case something gets locked up or we need to shut it off and we have to hold our board here and can't reach down to turn this off because we always want to secure our work, we can take this and actually just bump this with our leg and that will shut it off. And that allows us to shut this off hands free. Now, sometimes if you come here and try and turn this on, it won't turn on until you actually twist this. So if you come and hit the screen switch and it's not turning on, always just give this a turn and make sure the safety stop is out and you should be ready to rock and roll. Now, here's our scale for how much we're actually removing when we run our board through. And right now we're at about 1 16th of an inch right here. So I can just move this up if I wanna take off a 32nd or a 64th or whatever it is. But typically for what we're doing, I like putting it right about, about 1 16th of an inch. That's plenty of material. If I need to, I'll usually just take it, to, if I wanna take off just a tiny bit, I'll just bring it right there to 1 32nd and that, that would be usually perfect for most things that we are doing. Now, before you actually start even using this, you always wanna look at your board and see what's going on. I wanna make sure I don't have any cracks or I don't have anything stuck in here. If it's full of dirt, I wanna try and get off as much dirt as possible. Wire brush works really good because if I got dirt and rocks and whatever, that's gonna dull my blades pretty quick. Um, I wanna make sure it doesn't have any nails or staples or anything like that obvious in here. And if it's got a big crack or it's got a big knot or something that could come off that you can see, uh, you gotta be really careful of that. And I prefer that in my class that you not run that through this and let me take a look at it and then we'll kind of determine because if those blades hit that knot or that crack or that punky part, um, that thing can just explode the board. So you wanna be careful of that. Okay, so just be aware of what your board condition is before you start. The other thing is when we run this through, we always wanna run it with the grain going down because our cutter is cutting this way. And so we also want the grain, you can see here, it's actually going that direction right there, which is perfect. We want the blade to cut with the grain this direction. We don't want the blade cutting against that because then we're gonna get a lot of tear out and that's not good. So. We want to look at our grain orientation and then run if it's going down or if it's going down towards you, that's what we want because the blades are actually going to be cutting that same direction. Give us a nice smooth finish when we run this through. Again, we also want to take light cuts if possible. That's going to help us with our tear out. Um, if we take too big of a cut, sometimes we get a lot of tear out in our wood. And so nice light cut, we can, you know, three, four passes and getting a nice finish is way better than one pass and then getting a lot of tear out. And then we got to take even more material off than we thought we did. Now let's talk about the maximum and minimum we can put through this. Now we can go a maximum of 12 inches wide on this. Um, whether it's on edge, I'm never gonna have a 12 inch wide on edge board, but 
For the face, we can go 12 inches wide. It's the maximum we can go. And we can go as long as we want. We can go eight feet long if we want, but we typically we'll be going with something like two, three, four feet is what we'll be doing in here. The other thing is, what are our minimums? Because if we get too small, too short, we can run into a problem with our joiner. So in class here, we wanna make sure we are at least 12 inches wide or 12 inches long. Our board needs to be 12 inches long minimum. It needs to be at least one half inch thick. If it gets too small, what happens? It will rattle and shake and actually can splinter and just shatter and that's not good. And it needs to be two inches wide here at minimum. I don't want one inch, quarter inch, half inch. Even if it's thicker here, I want at least two inches this way, at least one half of an inch this way, and at least 12 inches from end to end here to make sure that this is safe and we're doing a good operation and we're not gonna run into trouble with the shattering or breaking or hurting ourselves. So that's, again, 12 inches wide, half inch thick, two inches. So let's talk about your safety and what you need to have. Obviously, you got your glasses on. If you need hearing protection, because it will get loud in the shop, make sure you get your hearing protection on. If you've got long sleeves or a hoodie, I prefer you pull those sleeves up if they're baggy. If they're nice and tight against your arm and it is buttoned, that's fine. If you want to unbutton it and roll up your sleeves, that's even better. But nothing should be hanging off your body, no tassels, no headphones know nothing that can actually get in here when you're leaning over this machine because your body will be right in this area right here and we don't want anything being able to get caught in that blade. The other thing we need are our push blocks and or push sticks. So we've got a push block like this, it's just plastic or we've got these push sticks that are wood. And you also wanna make sure those are there um, before you turn anything on before we fire it up. Again, I would like everybody to start with about 1 16th or less as far as the infeed table height. We're also going to adjust our fence here. So I can see that this is not going to fit between this bracket for our guard and the fence. So we're going to go ahead and adjust this. Let's show you how to do that. So on the fence, we've got these two knobs. If you need to make this a little bit wider with the machine off, we're going to make sure our push sticks are out of the way and then we can adjust this back. And I just need it wide enough for my board to fit between this bracket and the fence. Give, you know, give yourself about an inch at least um, in case the board is a little bit wider here, a little bit narrower over there. Once you've got that good spot, go ahead and just turn these knobs and lock it down, give it a tug and we're ready to go. Now you gotta make sure we got our push stick and or push block ready. Uh, I like using this one, or you can use this one, and then I've got something to hook on the back to push this through. So I want to be standing here. I don't want to be standing back here. I don't want to be leaning over the machine. This is super unsafe. I want to be my body. I want my body right up in here, okay? Pressure on the front, pressure down on the back and on the end, and I'm just gonna take this and push this all the way through maintaining pressure on the in-feed table and or the out-feed table as it goes through. Should something get stuck, like we are talking about before, if this is too much of an angle, sometimes it'll catch here. You do not want to back this thing out or let go. So that's where I'm going to take it and I'm actually going to hit that emergency stop with my leg right there. That will shut it down, leave the wood here until the machine comes to full stop then we can take it out and figure it out. But sometimes if you hit this at an angle, it will actually hit that opening where this arc is for the blade. And so you gotta be careful of that. Just try and keep it snug against the fence and it really shouldn't be a problem. Last step before we do this for real, we're gonna take this, just nice even pressure, nice even speed all the way through. I don't need to go super slow. Don't need to do that but I'm not just ripping this thing through super fast either. I wanna just take it nice and smooth, nice and even, all the way through, and that's gonna give me a nice finish, nice cut on the face of my board. Now, how much do I need to take off? 
for the milling process. This is step one of six. And typically I really only need to take about 80% off because and I can take it to the planer and go ahead and hit, get the rest of that eventually. But I at least want 80%, uh, if not 100% of this board, nice and flat. I shouldn't feel anything rough on here. And that's really what I'm looking for is 100%. If you get down to 80%, I at least need 80% of this board flat so I can take it to the planer and then we can finish up the rest there. So let's go ahead and show you what, how this works. On this machine, the motor should spin down very quickly. It shouldn't take a long time, but you can see here, it's just nice and smooth here. I still have right in there that needs to be taken care of and a little bit right here that needs to be taken care of, but we're close. So I'll probably run this through just a few more times and then we'll see how smooth we can get it. So we can see we're, we're about 95, 98%. I just have this little bit right there that I would need to handle, but now I can go ahead and I can handle my edge. So let's show you how we're gonna do that. So now that we've done our face, we wanna do one edge. And again, we're looking for that grain to be going down just like it is here. Because again, our cutter blade is going to be going this way. And that way it's going with the grain, it's not going against the grain. So you always wanna make sure that the grain orientation is, it is at least flat or is going down. If it's, if it's just going up a little bit, if it's wavy, there's really nothing you can do about it. That's just a piece of wood. But if you can see the grain and you can see its orientation, you always wanna run it through with the grain going down towards you as you run it through the machine. Now, if our board is taller than four inches, which is right about there or higher, uh, I can just use my hands. If it's four inches or lower, I'm gonna use my push sticks to push this through, but let's go through if it's four inches or higher and make sure that you're safe when you're doing this. So to give us a nice straight edge, what I wanna do is with my left hand, I want my fingers here right in this area kind of imagine where that is. And I'm pushing down with my thumb slightly to keep good contact. But the idea is I want pressure this direction and I want pressure going down. With my right hand, I don't want my thumb down here. I don't want to push it through like this. I don't want to push it through like this. I never want my fingers or my thumb pointing down towards the blade. The heel of my hand goes here in the corner. My thumb and fingers are all together on the top. Make sure they're as close to the top as possible. And with that downward pressure and pressure towards the fence, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna push this all the way through and make my cut. Now for our pieces that are smaller than four inches in width, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these two push sticks here. Now this one is nice because I can apply pressure towards the fence this way and kind of hook it right in the corner and maintain that downward pressure towards the infeed table that way. With this push stick, make sure that you're not pushing this way because you don't wanna hit the end of the fence. You wanna make sure it is in line with your piece of wood. That way it should go through. So that way when I'm here, I can maintain my pressure in and down with my left hand and then downward pressure with my right hand and all the way through.
So now, again, we've got that nice flat edge, and now it should be 90 to our face here, and we're ready to go on to our milling process. A couple of things you never wanna do. We're not running plywood through our jointer. Um, the jointer's not designed for processing plywood. It's not what it's built for, okay? Number two, we are never running a board like this with the end grain going across the cutter heads that's going to result in a really, really big problem. So the only thing we are cutting is either the edge grain or the face here. Those are the only two that we can actually cut with this machine. We never want to run end grain like this standing on edge, okay? And just to review, should your board get stuck, if you're here, you're in here, you're cutting, 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 it sticks, it's not going through, one, we don't try and force it and make it go. Two, we don't try and pick up the board while the machine is on. Or three, try and back this up. Never, ever, ever, ever try and do that. This is a one-way street. It should go all the way through. If it's not going through, again, all we're gonna do is hit that safety stop with our leg. We're gonna let it shut down, wait till we hear that blade stop pick up our stock and kind of figure out what's going on, what's keeping it from getting jammed up here. But again, we never pick it up. We never try and jam it through and we never try and back it up if this is on. So just for review, let's go through this real quick. If I'm milling the face, I got my push sticks or my push block, I'm maintaining that downward pressure all the way through. I'm not standing back here pushing this through. I'm not standing over here and trying to push this through, okay? I am standing right here and I'm going to take this and maintain that pressure all the way through my cut until this closes. Last step is to shut this off when you're done. Make sure that cutter head comes to complete stop. You are responsible until it comes to a complete stop, not just shutting off that off button. Also make sure it's dusted off, that it's not full of chips or sawdust or anything like that so it's ready to go for the next person.